first updates now, FRC is produced in partnership with PTC. On Friday, May 29th at 7.30 p.m. Eastern, come check out the incredible submissions for the Robots to the Rescue Challenge at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. PTC will be providing giveaways for both submitted robots and for those who watch live. Don't forget that you can register for Onshape for free and start designing right in your browser at onshape.com forward slash education dash plan. So Tyler, um, <laughs> sad times. Will any FRC events take place in 2020 besides the weeks, what, one and two-ish that we saw? Yeah, this is a, an interesting thing to go through. And the reason I bring this up on here is that really getting to specifically what FIRST said on the thing is that the FIRST will not support events for things, but that does not necessarily mean that there couldn't be events uh, that happen uh, moving forward. I think the other interesting thing, too, is looking at a, a bigger picture of not just Infinite Recharge, but will things like FTC and FLL happen during 2020 as well, too, where typically many events do happen for those as well. Uh, but, uh, you know, Andy, I'd love to get your input on this, as, you know, a lot of people uh, may point to things like the Andy Mark Field or something like that. Uh, would would Andy Mark actually uh, lease or loan out a field if somebody was interested in getting one? We would love to. However, it's not our equipment. Who owns that stuff is FIRST. So FIRST owns the game-specific items, and they also own probably what's worth more value is the electronics of every field. So most, gosh, most off-season events all run on what tra what traditionally has been FIRST-specific and FIRST-owned fields. We at AndyWork, we usually have three sets of those fields and then we facilitate the use of the field. But most of the cost for the off-season events is the transportation from, like if, if um, like Cowtown Throwdown, our, our cost is really mostly transportation of equipment from our place in Kokomo, Indiana, out to Kansas City. Mm -hmm. And and other events is similar. Now we do charge for use of game objects and some skilled FTA service and um, the rental of the field components themselves because – we still have to ship that stuff back and forth to first headquarters. But since it's first owned field, they do not, I can't speak for them, but I've talked to them about this a few times <laughs> last month. And they said they, they just can't feel comfortable um, per permitting the use of their equipment, not only for events that are out of their control because, um, because of the health of their, of the competitors, but also they felt, I, th I think they felt very torn regarding supporting their equipment for off-season events when we all know there are so many district and regional events that really wanted to run this summer or early fall. And so since they said no to running those regionals and district events, they felt like they had to say no to running off-seasons. So last time I went to an off-season event that required no first equipment, I was out actually in Taiwan for power up they, uh, in the, I guess the fall of 2018, sure. they were trying to get a lot of more activity going on with FRC teams in Taiwan. And those guys built their own field. They ran their own, um, you know, that's why I forget all the nomenclature, all the different names of things, but they had, they had tables and chairs. They had um, their, what was the, what was the place where you put the power, uh, the, the cubes behind the Alliance station? I forgot oh, the... what that was called. Power ups. Oh. The power up. So, yeah. whenever anybody got a power up, a, 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 a student would hold up a sign and hold an air horn with the sound. So it was all <laughs> manual. It was it was genius. These guys worked That's their amazing. butts off to try to run. That's so awesome. so you could you could theoretically run an off season event, but you just can't use first official equipment. But, but there's things like Chessy Arena, right? That you could potentially use as an FMS substitute, right? I I've never been to Chessy Champs, but I think. I think they still use the hardware. They still use the game specific hardware sure. and yeah. the electronic hardware. Yeah. I think what I think what they do is they they do some really nifty stuff with software. So if someone really wanted to go after it and they would have to just build their own switch generator and the the um the control panels and the power um, scoring device and all that stuff. It it would be mm -hmm. I'm sure people have these out there. There's a lot of practice fields out there, and I'm sure there's yeah. going to be a lot, a lot of play dates happening this fall. But I don't know if there's going to be off-season events. I'd be surprised if I saw like a 20 team or 25 team or whatever event because they're not they're not sanctioned unless first changes their mind, which I don't think they will. Um, 
they're not going to use first equipment for those types of events. Mm-hmm. You know, that's that's an interesting thing, Christine, is, uh, you know, with, with the current climate, you know, obviously right now, this thing you're saying, I don't think there's, you know, unless something drastically changes, I'd be very surprised if we see anything happen. But, you know, you never know. A vaccine could come. Yeah. Uh, you know, it could be more culturally acceptable at some point to have larger events. Uh, I've always said the barometer is the NFL. If the NFL allows people in stadiums, then we'll see what happens. Uh, what what say you? Is there any, any chance we might see something happen? I, I mean, I don't... I don't see it being a full on like real event or as close to our that people may have competed in week one and two. But there will be, I feel like there will be something. We're not going to, there's no way for us to really access the field. And who knows, like, where are we even going to hold an off season event? You know, our, like, our high school that we typically would host it at our teacher hasn't even been able to go in besides maybe one or two times in the last two months to like go and get one or two things. So I don't anticipate it happening in new England anytime soon. Um, I think for teams that are looking to do some sort of off season and engage people with something, um, really think it out before you do it because I mean, it, it could be really fun. I know that I would love to give our seniors any sort of experience with the robot that they built this year and the work that they put in. However, I know that, you know, us putting the effort and money and time into an off season that could, you know, really don't think has the ability to pan out the way that we would like it to. I don't think it's worth it. Um, I know that there are so many teams and like, you know, groups that are coming up with alternative ideas for a different type of competitive, like event or thing. Um, it may not be like in person, like people have talked about, like, you know, like the CAD, challenges that that fun does um like catathons and then so the simulator games like those are a great way to be competitive but not necessarily be uh like physically around each other i am curious to see though i know in texas um their district decided that they were going to go ahead and take the like chairman's award winners from the district events that they had chosen and then um do interviews for the winners that were technically like supposed to be interviewed at their district championship so i'd be curious Mm -hmm. to see like what non compet like robotics on the field, like off season things that teams do, that to me would be more interesting than trying to put in a ton of like resources and effort to like jank the game, I guess, <laughs> to some capacity. But I don't know. I want to see somebody make like a, a like what is it, the E V three kit like version of this year's game. Cause somebody's done it every year. That's true. And it's so good. Like so so good. Like I love when teams remake their robot using like either like Vex or um like FTC or FLL parts. That's so good. Or teams that make their robots out of food for like their end of year banquet. Like more people need to get better at, you know, like the cake sculpting aspect of of the off season. So yeah. And with that, let's roll into our next topic, which is going to be Chairman's vs. Engineering Inspiration, which up until recently I didn't realize was such a hot topic on the internet. And I got a little excited because that is what I spend all of my time entering doing. Um, well, not just EI and Chairman's, but anyway. So the discussion that was going on in Chief Delphi, that was really interesting. So in the comments that people were making, there was a lot of really good um I would say like points of view because you had a lot of people that, you know, are long standing members of the community. You have some students in there, um, teams that may have won an award for the first time recently. It was really interesting to see all the different takes on it. Um, I was actually surprised too to see people that I have either mentored with or, you know, that I'm friends with that had really, really strong opinions when they really could have cared less um, at the event themselves. So it was, it was really interesting. And I know Andy, your team has, whether or not you applied for chairmans or you've won, you know, the banner or the medals or whatever. Um, what's your take on this from the point of view as a current mentor on your team? Not necessarily somebody who has like all of that, you know, prior history of, you know, where the chairman's award was, you know, way back in the day or where EI yeah, sure. was way back in the day. I, our, our team, Cybertooth, is a great team. I, I, I love the kids. I love the team. This will be our 10th year coming up this coming year. And we have not ever – we've not ever won a, a district or a regional chairman's award. We're not – we're not as – we're not right now at the level of some of the really strong 
RCA level team in Indiana. With that said, I encourage our kids to still put put forth a chairman's award entry every year. And I think what it does is it makes them realize all the good that they've done. And we're one of those teams where, you know, we just do things because we want to do them. We don't, by no means do we do them because it looks good on chairman's, which drives me crazy. So I think they have the right attitude about it. Hey, we do these things that we want to do them. We do outreach. We do a, we do a robot camp in the summer, which they're debating on how to do right now. And, they do, they do other things like that, and oh, by the way, it goes in our chairman's award. We don't we don't do things to to get because they need to be chairman's award types of things. So for us, um, we would love to win chairman's award locally, and we we would like to eventually win chairman's award on, on a championship level. But we know that that's far far away. So for us, and in, in my opinion, I, I can't speak for our team, but because. Engineering Inspiration has a has a prize with it of of entry fee of thousands of dollars. I think for me, I would rather us win that because on the local level, at the world championship level, I think there's a different story. I think there's a lot more prestige with um, world championship Hall of Fame and Chairman's Award. People know, people remember. Those are legendary teams who win those. And I I don't know who won EI two or three years That's ago. That's a great point. On yeah. the, on the championship level. So the championship level, yes, Chairman's Award is where it's at. That gives you prestige. It's legendary. It's Hall of Fame. But on a local level where the regionals and districts happen, I think the EI is where it's at because it comes with a big old prize that helps you take care of fundraising. It helps you pay for kids' trips to um, champs. You can bring more kids to champs. You can bring more kids um, into this organization. And I think um, kudos to NASA and Dave Lavery for putting – for for sponsoring the engineering inspiration award years ago and giving out this prize money and i think i think my guess is they were hoping somebody else would come along and sponsor chairman's award in the same manner but no one's ever done it and I'm, i don't have a big enough company that could do that but that would be really cool if someone like you know some big old company came along and said hey we're going to give five grand to every um rca and district chairman's award team that would be neat wasn't there a year where yeah, uh, chairman's people got like two grand or something like that? I think it was three thousand actually, wasn't it? I don't remember. I, I, don't I think, think so I think this was back maybe like twenty, early twenty tens or something like that. I don't know. Maybe Chad can can chime in on this. I thought there was one year that they did that um, for. You know, I wonder uh, the data that that that's being presented here between chairman's and yeah. I think two things to keep in mind. One, this is Chief Delphi, so these are. Typically, people that are more attuned teams, like people who pay attention to things more, right, because they're actively surfing the Internet for things. Um, doesn't mean you agree with them or not, but, you know, versus, you know, teams that, you know, literally their season stops, they don't do anything. Second thing, with COVID-19 and everything coming around, I wonder how much of a bias uh, the – uh, $5,000 makes, especially during a time like this, right? You know, if you had done this two years ago, yeah, five grand's great, but now five grand is worth a lot more than what it was two years ago uh, on that. And then I think third is, you know, what if the five grand was gone? Uh, and also to mention, I think the five grand is only for U.S. teams, if I remember correctly. Is that correct? So, I believe so. Uh, that makes sense because this is a NASA sponsor. Yes, thing. Right. <laughs> NASA is, is yeah. our government money. They're not um, sponsoring they the Chinese to... teams or what? Correct. Oh. Yeah. So somebody in chat, no, N-L-S-N-G-R-N. I'm sorry. I don't know how to pronounce those letters put together, but um, they are on team 1108. And they said our first year we won national rookie all-star, which is insane. That's pretty amazing. Then we basically jump started the Kansas city region and have eight regional chairman's awards, zero EIs, but haven't won RCA since 2014. Um, they said well, money is definitely awesome. My feeling in the eye is that it is mean it is meaning that we're doing the right things to increase engineering and our education in our community. And honestly, I feel like they hit the nail on the head. To me, in in my observation and my, I think it's close to 20 years now. 98 was my first year. Um, You're over my, 20, Christine. My observation, at least. <laughs> a, uh, no. Uh, Christine, a little bit real. Am I back? You are back, yes. Am I human again? Okay. So, in my observations, um, I have noticed that the teams that get EI, at least for the most part that I've seen at the like regional and district level, 
are so happy because they have no clue. Um, EI, when you look at it on paper, in the award description on the first website, it's it has no like submission requirements whatsoever. So everybody's eligible for it walking into the venue. It's all based on the like basically the interaction that you have with the judges and then you know whatever else happens at the event in terms of how your team is behaving and the things that you're saying to the judges. There are people that literally have strategized as a team and coached their students or suggested to their students or whatever you want to call it to kind of like finagle every conversation back to, you know, one particular thing, whether it's the robot or, you know, outreach. So there's definitely ways to take an award like EI where it's not necessarily presentation based or submission based. Um, it's really just conversation and interaction based how you package your team's story and get people to remember it. There's ways to, to to approach that may not be like, you know, the way that most teams would think to do it, but will help kind of boost your chances in the judging room. Um, like when you look at the award description and that person hit it on the head when they were talking about, it's showing you that you guys are doing the right thing as a team. Um, like the description is celebrates outstanding success and advancing respect and appreciation for engineering within a team school or organization and community. Like that should be everybody's goal, but I think that this is like the perfect example of like a team that may not have cared about non-robot things and you know they may get this award and it'll jumpstart them to go to chairman's um i'm interested to see i know this is not necessarily correlated with this topic but i'm curious to see if the the documentation submission side of chairman's is going to be applied to the technical awards at some point um mm -hmm. this year to help kind of back up that you know, the, are you really doing what you're saying you're doing? Which when you think about it, like EI, you can definitely make things up and, you know, just spit it out on the spot to a judge's face or an interview. You genuinely hope it's not happening, but unfortunately there's the possibility for that. Um, I, I do hope that, you know, in the future we see some sort of technical award that may be like the crown jewel of the, you know, the technical side of awards, um, kind of like chairman's is, I guess, for, the outreach or like non-robot side of things where you do have to submit documentation like an FTC in order to be eligible for awards and stuff you have to have your engineering notebook and all these other things and mm -hmm. I'd be curious to see if first and you know the the people that are working on the um like judging and awards description side of things start to evolve that because we have seen a lot of changes in the awards in the last few years for the better I would say um to make it maybe more accessible to teams, uh, like the entrepreneurship award, totally revamped for all the right reasons, in my opinion. Um, Andy, I don't know, or Tyler, have you, have you guys seen any of the changes or like, what do you think we could see happen, I guess, based on like where things have gone with chairmans? Um, like, where do you see things going, I guess, in the future, Andy? You've seen, I feel like a big evolution of awards. Um, well, Chairman's, chairman's I'm torn on. I, I, I think there's a really good debate going on with chairman's with regard to how other, how your outreach into other STEM programs is graded by certain judges within the community and certain regions judge it different ways uh, because it, it's hard. It's hard for judges to have a rubric at the same time. It's hard for judges to be consistent. So somewhere in there, there's a sweet spot of the optimal judging process. And I know there's people who are very passionate on both sides of the issue with regard to chairman's award. Um, at the same time, what you're talking about is some some technical awards. Some people I know that get some students and mentors get very passionate about winning certain technical awards, and they're very they're they're very thankful and it's it's a it's a big deal to win certain ch ch technical awards. So I think there's going to be an evolution. I think our, our judges. Um, the volunteer judge advisors uh, at the championship level are very, very good. Um, Alan and Cindy and First Corporate does a good job with this. I think they listen. I think it takes them a long time to make changes, and I think that's okay because they're, they're not really they, – they shouldn't make changes quickly. So they will – I'm sure they'll make tweaks and changes to this as we go along. First updates now, FRC is produced in partnership with PTC. Don't forget that you can register for Onshape for free and start designing right in your browser at onshape.com forward slash education dash plan. Thanks for watching. If you want more fun content, be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.
Thanks to all of our co-executive producers on Patreon and Tier 2 Plus subscribers on Twitch, keeping fun loud, live, and independent.